This is a BNK analyzer. Actually, it's an, a later model, so it's made by Dynascan. Dynascan bought BNK. Uh, general purpose frequency generator. Now, this thing was made in the early to mid 70s, and the at the time it was a considered a very good device it's bulky it's got to be 11 12 inches 8 inches high 9 inches deep it is solid state the reason I want to use this or resurrect this device is because it has an adjustable output which is no big deal the meter though is calibrated in uh, decibels and I can set this to provide uh, 0 dB now 0 dB is I don't know if you can read that is 100 millivolts into 50 ohms. Now we're talking millivolts here. I found on the web, and there's a very good site about this E200D generator. The name of the original gentleman seems to be lost, and I don't know it. If I did, I would certainly mention it. This site was originally developed and maintained by a guy who was a true expert on these. The site now is just somebody's maintaining his historical work. In any event, once the meter is set to 0 dB, there's a set of attenuator switches here and I can switch in very amount, various amounts of attenuation and I can get it down to I can switch in individually or in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 80 dB 90 dB a total of 96 dB of attenuation. Now the output is designed to be terminated in 50 ohms. So if I know this output voltage, and these are all in RMS, I can convert this output to dBs. And that will allow me to test this little watt meter. The thing that made this such a very good signal generator is that it's extremely well shielded, which means the only RF that escapes from this box escapes through the output connector. Modern signal generators, a lot of them, have plastic cases and are not very well shielded. And of course, good shielding negates the purpose of having all these attenuators and adjustable output. If there's radiation from the box itself, who knows whether the device under test is receiving RF from this connector or RF in leakage from the box. Getting back to this connector, as I said, this generator was made in the early to moderately late 70s. This connector was very popular at the time. It's actually a high impedance microphone connector. It was made by Switchcraft and it was designed to hold not a coaxial 
cable that's designed for RF, a shielded single conductor audio cable, and it the cable itself was secured with this screw into this flexible and was probably about a quarter of an inch in diameter. These were used on high impedance microphones and guitar pickups of the cheaper variety. The kind of stuff you would find in a high school uh, after school band. You know, four guys that think they can play music. I've replaced or repaired a lot of these because those guys tend to walk around with their microphone or, or their guitar, drag the amplifiers onto the ground, and, and in general just strain these connectors. They were very popular on lower end test equipment, ETH kit, Night kit, Ico, B and K. You would not have found these on uh, any of the higher end test equipment. Certainly not a Hewlett Packard, Tektronics. So the only thing I'm going to do with this, it appears to work. I've had it God knows how long. I've never used it. And I see these for sale for around $50 to $60 on eBay right now. Other than the bulk, it's a very good investment. But this is, needs to be replaced. I'm going to replace it with a BNC connector. In order to replace the BNC connector, I'll take these five screws out of the back of the case. Looking at the back of this, I see it's power consumption is listed as 6 watts. With the screws out, we just lift the cover off. Then we need to remove these two screws. And this grounded strap. Looks like we'll have to remove the power cord. The power cord cord grip is a little plastic. Uh, it's now two pieces. These two pieces fit together. You can see they squeeze the cord. If you can see that, it, it uh, puts a crimp in the cord where it passes through the hole. This whole front end along with this chassis should separate itself from the sides and the bottom of the enclosure. The attenuator and the output connector are inside this copper plated, alum copper -plated sheet metal box. allows us to take this copper, it's probably just copper plated, shield off. This is the bottom of the attenuator board. This is the RF output and you see it disappears into the shell of the connector. 
Now the way these connectors are put together, the wire actually extends through the front of this connector and this is a soldered blob here. So if I grab a hold of the wire going into the back of the connector and I take my soldering iron and I melt this blob I can pull the wire out of the connector. With the wire unsoldered from the front I can just grab it and pull it out. Now with the wire removed it's just a matter of loosening that nut and the connector shell can be removed. It turns out that this jack was a press fit into the chassis. So I had to grasp it with these vice grips and just wiggle it slightly and it popped right out. Now what we have here is a fake front. I mean it's a real front but it's not what was holding the uh, connector in. The real chassis is behind the fake front. Now we'll see a BNC with a round flange fit right in this hole. We'll secure this mounting plate. Put the lock washer on and the nut. And we'll tighten it with a half inch nut driver. Nice and snug. Take a little closer look at this connector. Unless you've worked in electronics in the 70s, you won't probably will not have seen one of these. The center conductor is installed sticking through this hole, and then it's just soldered, and the solder blob is what makes the the uh, connection for the center conductor. And the shield would have been uh, either just the chassis or there would have been a, uh, a solder terminal placed underneath the nut. It's not really a connector that's supposed to be used for RF. At this point we merely work backwards. We uh, solder the orange wire to the center conductor of the BNC, replace the attenuator cover, put this grounding strap back in place, uh, replace the two screws that hold the front panel to the side and bottom. Uh, because we're working with sheet metal, Turn the screws backwards until they fall into the th previously cut thread. There we fell in. That way we're not cutting a new thread. I don't think we are. And we'll reassemble the back onto it with five screws and we're done. I'll put a link in the description to the website that carries all the information about this device. So here it is all put back together and apparently working. Common to these devices are a faded red carrier level scale. It seems as if sitting around for 40 years has left it a little bit subject to UV rays. Some of the ones that are for sale on eBay are missing this knob. I have heard complaints about B&K's knobs cracking. Uh, this unit is fine. And we've replaced, we have now have a BNC connector. We'll proceed now to play with this little watt meter and see how it responds.
Well, if you like this kind of video, please uh, drop me a note, subscribe to my site, or at least come back and see how we're doing with this little watt meter. Thank you.